Namaskar and a very warm welcome to everyone joined in today on our 55th New Year's Species New Year Zoo Talk. This talk is being organized by the Central Zoo Authority in Delhi as part of the ongoing Azadi Kamut Mahotsav. The Mahotsav is a 75 week long celebration to commemorate 75 years of India's independence, which falls on the 15th of August 2022. The Central Zoo Authority is taking the celebration forward through a massive outreach campaign entitled Conservation to Coexistence The People Connect. Under the helm of this campaign, we will be showcasing 75 conservation priority species and 75 zoos, highlighting one species and one zoo each week. We are currently in week 55 of the celebration with the Himalayas as the species in focus and the Dhalada Nature Park as the zoo in focus. So joined today to speak to us on the species is Ms. Ranjana Park, who is a project associate at the Wildlife Institute of India, Dheradun. Ranjana is an ecologist passionate about understanding the ecology of mammals and advocating their conservation. Her research work spanning over a decade has required her to spend a significant amount of time in collecting feed-based physical and biological information that influences the dynamics of species, such as the musk deer and the snow leopard. Snow leopard in the remote corners of Himalayas. Her mountains have helped hold a special place for her in her heart and uh, her talk today will cover the ecology of the species, the role it plays in the mountain ecosystem and the conservation initiatives therein. So over to you Ranjana to give, proceed with the talk. Thank you Arindati for that nice introduction. Give me a minute and start the presentation. So I'll keep my video off so that the presentation goes smoothly. Okay. So um, hi everyone. Uh, so, in my today's talk, I'll be sharing some intriguing uh, ecological facts about one of the iconic species of Indian Himalayan region and uh, in the Himalayan region. Um, nature, naturalists and adventurers have long admired uh, the. Just a second. Yeah, sorry. Naturalists and adventurers have long admired them for their unique looks, sure footedness, and ability to live in steep and rugged terrain. Um, Himalayan thar is a large ungulate native to Himalayan region. In the, it is found in the southern Tibet, northern India and Nepal. They have been introduced outside uh, uh, their native range in countries such as uh, like Argentina, New Zealand, South Africa and United States. Uh, Himalayan thar belongs to uh, uh, Erectorectyla group. This is a group of ungulate, with, uh, ungulate species who has even number of toes such as uh, the other species including in these groups are deer, uh, antelopes, and pigs. <clears throat> but Himalayan thars resemble, uh, in fact, they are phylogenetically more close to the goat species. They are also known as group living wild goats. They have finely formed uh, head and erected ears and have short horns that curve sharply backwards. Even though phylogenetically they are close to goats, they lack typical features of goats such as uh, the male lacks beard, the muzzle is naked, and have short horns, which is usually lacks in other goat species. The male are almost twice the size of female. They have uh, large, long, uh, tangled, coarsest, flowy hair, particularly well developed in adult males which forms a lion-like mane uh, in males. Their fur is deep uh, reddish brown. Female and young ones are comparatively lighter in color. They are group living mountain goats. They live in mixed herd of around two to 77. There are times when uh, researchers and ecologists have cited a group larger than 100 and 100, around 150 individuals also. Uh, they remain in a mixed herd throughout the year, except in spring and summer when adult male forms a separate group and move to other areas, most likely to avoid competition with females and young for the forage. Uh, by the plain look, you might not be able to differentiate male and female, but, but looking carefully in, uh, at different features, you will be able to uh, differentiate different age classes in Thar. For example, the long fur of uh, especially males around the neck uh, helps in differentiating different age classes. In the mature males, which are around four to five year old, have 
long, well-developed mane-like structure, which goes from shoulder, uh, shoulders, neck, up to uh, knees also. Whereas it is comparatively less developed in the lower classes of uh, males, such as young adult males and subadult males. Uh, subadult males and the adult females looks uh, similar in size. However, the prominent uh, rough around the neck is not present in females. Earlings are the one which are of age around one to two, and it is not possible to differentiate the sex uh, at this age by uh, by visually looking at them. Uh, young ones are um, comparatively they are smaller in build, of course, and they have lighter. Uh, coat color compared to all the other classes. So ecologists have used these information to understand their population structure, their population uh, status, as well as trend. <clears throat> Himalayan thurs are found in the alpine uh, areas. In these areas, they are partial toward uh, the grassy slope and alpine meadows, uh, with interspread with the rocky outcrops and rugged terrain. They are also found in the subalpine and temperate habitat. Here again, they are partial towards the grassy slopes where they have rocky spurs and uh, uh, cliffs uh, to escape from predators. Um, so in the, in, the, in the Himalayan region, their distribution range starts from 1500 meters to 5200 meters. But generally, they are more commonly found between 2,500 meters to 4,400 meters, which includes the subalpine, alpine, and the temperate region. Uh, so uh, their habitat use changes seasonally. So Thar prefers the alpine meadows in spring and summer, whereas due to presence of heavy snow cover in the high reaches in the high altitude areas, they are forced to move down to uh, lower areas uh, such as subalpine and the temperate uh, habitats. Uh, along all the along the season or along the habitat type, one feature remains the same, which is their preference toward the rocky and the rugged terrain. So this um, thar have a, a very well developed adapted uh, hoops. <clears throat> Their, the core area of their hoops is flexible and the outer rim is, is, is uh, hard and helps them in hooking to the surfaces. Uh, the flexible areas help, uh, flexible area of their hoops helps them gripping, getting the grip to the uh, smooth surfaces. So this is how, this is one feature uh, among all the ungulate or among all the species, Thar is one of the uh, best known climbers uh, uh, known from the areas, and this is one uh, ability of the species which help them evade the predators uh, such as common leopard and snow leopard that are found in this region. Other than uh, the, the, these carnival species, thar space these these habitats with ungulate species such as bharal, goral, Himalayan sero, and musk deer. Omnivore species uh, such as Himalayan bear, brown bear, and black bear are also found in these habitats. So Himalayan thar are primary grazers. They feed mainly on grasses, such as in herbs, and occasionally ferns and mosses are also found in their diet. So a typical day in a Himalayan thar's life, especially during summer, looks like getting up early in the morning from their refuge areas in uh, in the in the base at the base or in the middle uh, middle areas of the uh, hill. Then they start uh, walking up. Up, upwards toward the ridge line or the cliffs, grazing through the grassy slopes and the shrubs. Uh, they rest during the day, and then by the evening, they start coming down to the refuge and the shelter uh, near the middle or the base of the mountain. Uh, on contrary to summer, the, the, uh, the winters are quite eventful. This is a time when uh, the male group, which segregate themselves uh, from the other uh, members of the group, to forage separately. They unite with the group, uh, with the larger group of Thar, and they uh, and they undergo the reproductive uh, period, which is also known as uh, rutting. So uh, this is the time when Himalayan, a male Himalayan Thar can be seen in their full, full glory with well-developed fur and full-grown uh, fur around their neck. The male may approach female with his neck. So male shows several behavioral patterns.
pattern to impress the female. The male may approach a female with his neck lowered almost parallel to the ground with its muzzles directed ahead or slightly raised. Male uh, add further emphasis to this display by vocalizing, tongue flickering, head jerking, teeth barring and lip curling. To show off their um, strength and fighting potential, male often clash and butt their head. But these kinds of interaction rarely turns aggressive or uh, harmful. So after the rutting period, the young ones are born in the spring, then the food sources are abandoned. Usually one kid is born and twinning is very rare. Uh, generally, pregnant female leave the herd to a uh, secluded site to give birth uh, to the young ones. And also they stay in that secluded area for some time to develop the bond between mother and kid. <clears throat> the weaning period lasts for around two to three months. And the young ones, they attain a sexual maturity after 1.5 to two years. So this was about the ecological facts about Thar, but talking about the status and distribution, the current range of uh, Himalayan Thar uh, starts from the Banihal Pass near the Jammu and Kashmir, and uh, the across the Greater Himalayan region of uh, Greater Himalayan region, and in the east it ends near uh, Kanchenjunga National Park, Sikkim. Although historically their range was much wider. To this, they were reported. Uh, there, there, are reports of Thar presence from the uh, Deer Valley of Pakistan. But today, it ends just near the east, uh, just east of the LOC between India and Pakistan. No recent record have been reported from Pakistan. In Bhutan, Thar is reported from uh, Jigme Kesar uh, Nature Reserve, but Forest Department have not yet confirmed their presence in the area. Uh, the status of uh, Himalayan Thar is declining and it has been designated as near threatened by the IUCN. There are several areas in their potential distribution range where Thars have visual, has virtually gone extinct, such as Dachigam, Kishwa, Pangi. And the major reason is hunting pressure and the livestock grazing. So, uh, talking about the threats. For the Himalayan Thar in the region, as I said earlier, the hunting pressure is one of the main reasons for their decline across the range. Uh, so, in case of Thar, as I said earlier, they prefer alpine habitats uh, during the summer. So, this is the time when it is somehow somewhat possible for Himalayan Thar to avoid the encounter with humans, where they can move to um, cliffs areas or uh, alpine regions and high ridges. But it's winter. When they are forced to move down towards the human habitation or toward the lower elevation where human presence is comparatively more and this is the time when they are hunted the, uh, where they are most hunted and more prone to hunting pressure uh, other than this in, human population has gradually increased in human uh, indian himalayan region which has also led to encroachment of humans in the forest habitats and the himalayan thar habitats the Another prominent and major threat to Himalayan Thar is the livestock grazing pressure. Livestock grazing is one of the uh, main uh, pra human practice in the alpine habitats. Like during summer, you'll, you'll across the meadow, you'll just see there are areas where you'll just see uh, sheep and goat. The pressure is so much that it has led to habitat degradation in many areas. Studies have shown that there is the over, there are areas where the overlap between the livestock and the Himalayan thar diet is around or more than 50%. So such competition for the forage has uh, has, has led to the habitat displacement, habitat loss for the Himalayan thar in many areas. Other than that, one particular issue which has raised the attention of many manage, managers as well as conservation practices is the increase in presence of feral dogs and increase uh, in, in like in a big group of around 10 to 12 in the alpine areas and they, with this um, uh, group size they can easily hunt any ungulate in the area we have recorded uh, camera track footage of you know feral dogs uh, this is here showing one of them uh, chasing a sambar in the similar landscape and we have recorded their presence up till 55 uh, 5000 meters also so this is another uh, threat which needs uh, management uh, actions. The lastly, the major one, which is the increase in uh, infrastructure development in these areas. And uh, for example, a major one being the hydropower development, which leads to you know large area uh, 
uh, modification and human uh, establishment. So such uh, large scale development has definitely reduced the amount of habitat for thar in the region. So there's uh, with the ban of legal hunting and control of poaching after the implementation of Indian Wildlife Protection Act, the thar population is increasing in several areas. This has been gradually observed across the range. So, uh, like, for example, Kedarnath Wildlife Sanctuary is one of the best spot um, to site and observe Himalayan thar, be it summer or uh, in their rutting phase. <clears throat> Other than this, if you look at the distribution of Himalayan thar shown in uh, uh, blue color here, the protected area coverage is quite impressive uh, across the range. However, the problem remains the same. Despite the protection status, the grazing is still practiced inside the for, uh, inside the protected areas, and this definitely need to be uh, need to be solved. Uh, so maybe community in, in initiatives, or there are areas where you know pockets of uh, people, uh, managers and conservationists have tried this model where leaving few areas grazing free has uh, can help them you know revive their population in their area. So. Similar uh, management strategies can be applied to all the protected areas across the Thar distribution range. And there are in recent in initiatives um, such as Project Snow Leopard Secure Himalayan Project, which aims to uh, improve the status of wildlife as well as habitat across the Snow Leopard range, which includes uh, the uh, all all the Himalayan Thar ranges also. So a project like this definitely uh, has raised the hope for a brighter future for Himalayan Thar in the region. Other than this, snow leopard population assessment in India is currently underway, which includes both the assessment of snow leopard as well as their prey species. Uh, Himalayan Thar is one of the important prey species for snow leopard. So maybe uh, by soon we'll have an uh, um, estimate of uh, Himalayan Thar across its range. And uh, with the help of those estimates, we'll be able to plan better and uh, for the Himalayan Thar in the region. So uh, that's all uh, was from my side about Himalayan Thar. I hope it has uh, uh, sparked the interest in uh, you to know more about them. I would recommend these two reading materials, one by Dr. Satya Kumar and co-author co uh, in the chapter on Himalayan Thar, which covers all the aspects of Himalayan Thar in the mammals of Southeast Asia. The another one is the IUCN status report, which gives all the recent uh, information about Himalayan Thar. That's all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ranjana, for sharing the information on this on this issue and uh, on the conservation initiatives that are there. Uh, we will take question answers for this session at the end of the talks, end of today's uh, session. So we now move on to our Know Your Zoo talk, where, for which we have with us uh, join Mr. Rahul Romani, who is the director of the Dhaladar Nature Park, Himachal Pradesh. So Mr. Rahul is an Indian Forest Service officer of the 2012 batch and has worked in different capacities with the Marshall Village Forest Department post joining of his boys joining the service. And apart from being the director of the zoo, Mr. Rahul also holds the charge of as of the DCF Wildlife from Hamirpur Wildlife Division. And he will speak to us more today on this. So over to you, sir. Thank you, Arun Dithiji. Uh, it's a really a, my pleasure that um, uh, in this campaign of Azadi Ka Amrut Mahotsav, this our Gopalpur Zoo has been selected and uh, we have provided the opportunity uh, to share about our zoo on this platform. So thank you. Thanks to you and thanks to Ranjana for uh, uh, giving such a good presentation on the species in focus, Himalayan Thar. And so... I will just uh, share my screen. Yeah. Uh, so um, <clears throat> I'm the uh, I'm Rahul Rohone. Uh, uh, director of Dolada Nature Park, which goes by the name, popular name Gopalpur Zoo, which is located in the Kangra district of Himachal Pradesh. So uh, this zoo was established in the year 1992 
and it is located in Gopalpur in Kangla district. It uh, falls in the category of small zoo and uh, it is spread over an area of 12.5 hectares. So uh, this Gopalpur Zoo is home to near uh, uh, 23 species of animals and birds. So these are the species prominent among them is the Asiatic lion, common leopard, uh, black bear, uh, sambar, barking deer, goral, leopard cats, turtles, pea fowls, pheasants, and uh, in the exotic species we have this uh, bajrigar, cockatiel, and rosy-faced lovebird. So uh, these are some of the uh, mammals and uh, which are housed in our zoo. Uh, these are the raptors, black kite and Himalayan griffin. Uh, these are the pheasants which are uh, housed in our avi uh, aviary. Indian pea fowl, cheer pheasant, red jungle fowl, khalij pheasant and grey peacock pheasant. And these are the exotic. We also have this uh, Indian flap shell turtle and Indian black turtle also. So, uh, giving a uh, little detail about the zoo that uh, in the last three years, uh, the number of visitors have been around uh, two lakhs, but uh, since uh, because of COVID and also uh, the number of visitors were reduced in 2021 and this year we have uh, received almost one lakh visitors in 2021-22. So these are our fee structures that we have in our zoo. So uh, basically the zoo management, uh, in the zoo management, we have two aspects of management, which we uh, focus on in our uh, zoo. So one is the animal management and one is the staff management. So these are the broad categories uh, of management, which we do the enclosure management, treatment and healthcare of the animals rescue and rehabilitation of injured animals from the wild and the nutrition uh, aspect of the animals. So uh, in the animal management activities, what we uh, have in a place in our zoo is that we have this daily feed schedules, vaccination schedules uh, for each um, animal in the, housed in the zoo. We have this uh, proper feed schedule for the all the animals according to their weights. Vaccination schedule for all the animals which uh, require mandatory or uh, yearly or uh, oh. half yearly vaccination. Disinfection schedule is uh, there and it is followed rigorously. And during the COVID times, it was that most priority. Deburming uh, is also being done regularly. We ha also have this rescue and treatment facility. Though our zoo is not a rescue center, but uh, since it is the only zoo in the uh, northern part of uh, Himachal Pradesh, so it caters to uh, the injured animals, uh, rescue and treatment of the in injured animals in, uh, in this area. We also uh, do the enrichment activities uh, like uh, in the enclosures for the better upkeep and better uh, health management of the animals. So this is our uh, structure of uh, staff management. We have a director uh, of the zoo. Then we have this RFO, uh, range forest officer who's in charge of the zoo, a zoo biologist, a veterinary doctor. And uh, below that we have deputy rangers, forest guards who are, uh, who have been given the responsibility of handling each enclosures. And, uh, to, and the basic, uh, the main, uh, workers who are there to handle the animals are the animal attendants and who take care of uh, the cleaning and disinfection activities in the zoo. So for the staff management, what we uh, do is the annual health checkup of the zoo staff every year, which is mandatory uh, as per the CZA and also for the uh, good health care of the zoo staff. We also provide zoo animal handling training to our staff. Uh, with the help of CZA and other institutions uh, for better management and better handling of the zoo animals. We also provide exposure visits to our field staff uh, who are posted in the zoo for uh, to know better management practices which are happening in all over the zoo, you know, all over the country. We are also uh, giving this tranquilizer gun use training to the field staff of other divisions also 
which is very uh, essential for the rescue and treatment of the wild animals. So to give uh, some highlights of our zoo is that we uh, had brought the Asiatic lion from Sakarbag Zoo in the year 2019 and uh, the pair successfully bred and these are the pictures of the uh, lion cubs uh, which are now almost 15 months old and uh, they have bred successfully in the zoo. The zoo population is also flourishing in most of the uh, populations uh, since uh, there are good uh, conditions being provided to them. So these are the some of the pictures. So they, this one aspect of our zoo is also the rescue and rehabilitation. So this caters to the adjoining districts of Himachal Pradesh, Mandi, Hamirpur, Chamba, Una, Kangra, Bilaspur, and Kullu. This uh, from these districts we actually receive calls for rescue and rehabilitation, rescue of the injured wild animals, and we have been treating them uh, here in the zoo and most of the cases we have, we try that they are rehabilitated back into the wild but uh, the uh, animals which are not being able to rehabilitate are housed in the zoo uh, after following all the procedure so you can see from this that uh, in 2021-22 we actually rescued 24 animals and bird species of which five individuals were rehabilitated back in the wild some of them could not survive and uh, some were housed in the zoo. So uh, during the COVID times and also the post COVID times, these are some of the rescued animals which were uh, given proper care and uh, in the zoo uh, till the time they were able to be rehabilitated in the wild. So these are the some of the pictures of rehabilitation of Himalayan Griffon, Russell's Viper and Parakeets. We also uh, held workshops and training sessions for uh, different uh, uh, individuals and different groups which visit the zoo. One of them is the uh, interns or students from the veterinary college uh, in Palampur who come every year they are being given the training uh, of rescue and tranquilizing uh, and also treatment of the wild animals in the zoo. We also have other outreach programs of educating the masses or how they how the, the, those conflicts can be managed. We also carry out this education and awareness program, which is the basic aim of the zoo to educate the young people in the zoo. So uh, these are the school children and college uh, college going students who were being educated in the uh, about the importance of wild animals and the uh, and its role in conservation. Uh, these these are some of the uh, parties young college going students and uh, school students in wildlife week celebrations where we conducted different kind of activities like painting competitions, slogan writing, drawing, painting. So these all kind of activities we do carry out every year during the wildlife week. Uh, these are some of the activities. We also carry out these enrichment activities uh, in the zoo to keep the animal busy and to give uh, the animal more natural kind of habitat in, the, in their enclosures. So these are some of the um, areas or some of the works that we did. This is the raised platform in a goral enclosure, which was given to them. Then there's a bathing pond in the Asiat bear enclosures, plantation of grass species in the pheasantry enclosures. These are the wooden perching sites for the uh, leopard, where the leopard can actually sit and perch on the, uh, the actually use these uh, uh, wooden perches. Then we also, have given some activities to the animals to keep them busy like uh, putting the jaggery and groundnut in the bamboo bamboo and which uh, the black bears like to find out and uh, eat it uh, also the asiatic lion where the meat balls meat uh, feed is given in the jute balls or in the 
boxes where which where it is been uh, forced to find it and then uh, eat it these are some of the activities we have also uh, tried to create the naturalistic natural environment for egg laying of the pheasants also so other than the mainstream uh, zoo we also have uh, in the in our uh, vicinity we also have natural flora and fauna uh, like this butterflies birds so there are uh, different kinds of bird species and butterfly species which have been recorded in our zoo campus so uh, in the past years 84 species of free ranging birds and 30 species of butterflies are found in our campus and uh, these are the some of the greenery uh, that we have uh, made it a point that there is a green corridor or green areas in the zoo where we can actually provide a good environment learning environment to the visitors so uh, this is all about the zoo and uh, we are trying to give the best environment to our zoo animals which uh, we try to do it uh, maintain the continuity thank you thank you sir for giving uh you know, encapsulating all about the zoo in a very short uh, span of time and so with this we move on to the question answers for today's talk so ranjana are you there to take question answers for you for your part of the talk first so yes yes the first question for you is that uh, how is the resource partitioning of the garden that with other sympatric species and overlapping habitats? I mean, like researchers have noticed this uh, in many areas. Like, for example, uh, researchers, uh, like in my area where I have studies, Gangotri National Park, um, we have alpine gradient of habitat, for example, alpine, subalpine, and, um, and temperate habitat. But uh, when you look at the distribution of Thar, their presence in alpine habitat is comparatively less compared to other areas. The one reason I believe uh, why it is like that is the presence of uh, blue sheep in the alpine region. So uh, I believe in many areas, other species such as especially group living species, they restrict the distribution or influence the distribution of Himalayan Thar. So definitely this is one governing factor which need to be researched more. Right. Uh, and the second question for you is that are there any observations of intraspecific aggression in, uh, between the Thars uh, in, while defending territories? Uh, so far, no, I have not observed anything like that. But I'm sure it's there. Like normally, I would believe they try to avoid each other to avoid such aggressive interaction. And that's why they're so rare. Uh, like people have not seen uh, so much. Uh, so many aggressive incidences like that. So, yeah. All right. And uh, the next question for you is that do you think in community engagement can help safeguard the species in terms of the habitat law, in, in terms of the threat of habitat loss? And are there initiatives that you know which are currently in place to see, see this group? Um, so there is a very good example uh, which is happening in Spiti Valley, like in Kibber National Park, where uh, the conservation organizations such as uh, NCF and the Forest Department together have designated uh, livestock free uh, uh, livestock free grazing areas. So and which is managed with the you know consent of the community which lives there. So this is one example which benefits both. And they, I think, there are some areas where they even leash their uh, part of their grazing uh, land. For the conservation, so this is something which can be done in for other ungulates in Himalayan region also. And one more thing, uh, uh, I would like to add to the previous answer. Yeah, so we had uh, deployed a lot of cameras in Gangotri National Park to understand the species status and distribution range, but they were captures of you know uh, gurul and thar grazing together. So maybe this kind of uh, interspecific interaction uh, also differs. You know, it might be more competitive with the bharal but not with gurel and uh, barking deer. So there are camera trap captures where the uh, gurel are grazing along with the thar herd. So uh, this is just one point which I wanted to add to the earlier answer. 
All right, gentlemen. So I think those were the questions we received for you. Uh, we now move on to question answers for Mr. Rahul. So, sir, the first question for you is that since the Himalayan ecosystem is unique and there are unique challenges related to the climate and temperature there, uh, what special arrangements are made in the zoo for animal upkeep and you know welfare that visitors you know the changes? Uh, yeah, actually, we have uh, uh, almost all the species which are very um, natural to these uh, climatic areas, except few species like the Asiatic lion, but uh, not uh, very, uh, means these animals are uh, so adaptive and they find their own ways of adapting to the uh, climatic conditions. So uh, there are not many things that we do, but we try to provide the uh, as natural conditions environment to the animals as as possible like in case of lion cubs when they were born so we provided them the bed of jute jute and all so that and it they were born during the winters so to keep the uh, their nightshades warm and all so we provided them the jute beds bed sheets and like uh, like conditions so that they can uh, avoid or or feel the warmth in the nightshades all right, sir. And so the next question for you is that what are the future plans of the zoo in terms of you know animal welfare care or the development plans that are in place? Yeah, actually, uh, we have now received the approved master plan for our zoo and recently. So now we are now uh, going to refurnish or uh, all the all our enclosures. And we are now adding more animals and also uh, trying to create more space for uh, different uh, different kind of species uh, which we can accommodate. And there is a very uh, and good need to have all the uh, means all the facilities for the visitor experience and also for the animals as per the norms of the CZA. So uh, as as now this master plan has been approved, so we are now in the process of making a. Um, plan for all the reconstructions that is to go and that is going to happen in this. Right, so, so I think uh, those were the questions for today's talk on know your species and know your zoo. So with that, we come to the end of our 55th know your species, know your zoo talk. On behalf of the Central Zoo Authority, I would like to thank both Ranjana and to you, sir, for joining us, for taking time out of your schedules and joining us for this talk. And I would also thank the audience who have been with us throughout and also inform them that we will be back next week with our week 55 species, which is the Himalayan must deer and the zoo in focus is the Himalayan Nature Park Buffet. So do tune in for that tech talk next Wednesday from 4 to 5 p.m. And all other nature park will be continuing the outreach activities throughout this week. So if you are in March, privilege to visit the zoo and uh, take part of that. Thank you so much once again for joining us for this talk. Namaskar. Thank you so much.